Hey everyone, Obelisk here. Welcome to another installment to my Dayok uh, class overview video series. Um, today we're going to look at the Valkyrie on Midgard. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about specs, um, what abilities they get, um, different RAs, some strategies, and maybe some template things, some template choices, things you might want to add in your item template um, selection. So let's go ahead and get into game here on my Valk. Um, and we'll look at my spec line first off. And I'll tell you um, the strengths of this spec and maybe uh, we'll go over some of the abilities this spec gets and then we'll go over after that pretty much all of the um, the abilities that Valkyries can get at the higher spec lines and different specs. But um, this spec right now is, um, if you can see here, it's 42 shield, uh, 24 Odin's will, 41 spear, and 42 mending. Uh, this is a great spec in my opinion for groups. Um, Gets you slam and things like that, so you're uh, a lot harder to peel, and you can peel a little bit easier off yourself and off friends if you need to. Um, what you lose here is like a Dex Quick Shear and some damage from your Odin Will or Odin Will um, abilities. But uh, let's go ahead and open up our what abilities we get. We'll, we'll go ahead and first off look at um, we'll look at Spear, our melee uh, melee spec, real quick. Um, I'm going to start with the two main styles of spear and that's going to be the anytime chain whirling spear and roundhouse so what whirling spear is is just a anytime style it's just a low damage um i'm oh, sorry windmill sorry whirling spear is your other anytime that's my mistake uh sorry windmill sorry windmill sorry windmill windmill is your uh anytime style that chains into roundhouse and it's a low damage low endurance cost style um, not a lot to it, but where it becomes powerful is when you combo it with Roundhouse, the, uh, the second part of that chain. And what Roundhouse does is it has a massive 200 delve crush DD PBOE proc to it. Um, so it's going to hit extremely hard. As you can see, it hit my Shaman with 26 crush resist for uh, 434, just the proc. I do have this weapon skill buff that procs, so that is going to augment the damage a little bit, but still, that's a massive hit. Um, so your your main source of damage with Spear is this Anytime Chain. So hit Windmill, and then Roundhouse. It can resist, uh, as you see here, but um, it's super strong. It's also good for clearing Earth Pets, things like that. If you, um, if you can hit one Earth Pet with Windmill and not one-shot it, and then you can hit the second hit them all with roundhouse and they'll probably clear most of them with that proc but um as you can see here i'm just gonna hit the style a few more times hits really hard just overall great style chain um another style in this uh line is razor's edge i'd say uh your back style it's high or medium damage high in cost but it's a seven second back stun so super strong hit that and then hit them with some roundhouses and windmills and whatnot so another really good style in this line is your side snare. And this is just a basic side style, style that has a uh, 19 second snare. It's medium damage. It's your run of the mill melee snare. Um, great for peeling off yourself or off others if you can. Um, you can also use this in solo if you can like run through, hit him with that and kite away to heal or whatever. Uh, it's a good idea. Um, other styles in this line, um, you do, if you, if you don't think you'll be able to land very many roundhouse chains, like windmill and roundhouse, you can use whirling spear. And that's going to be a much higher growth rate style, um, especially than windmill. So if you know you're only going to be able to land like one style in the chain, you're not going to be able to get roundhouses off due to things like PBT, your dex quick and hasty buff to hell, your target has PBT, your, like a lot of defense. And all you can hit is one style and you want to get the most out of it. Windmill is probably your best bet. And that's just going to be a, uh, a high damage style it's not gonna be a ton more than uh, windmill probably but it is probably gonna hit a little bit harder just due to having a higher growth rate as you can see here it says high damage versus low damage on windmill um, other things that will be used probably more in the solo game are things like your um let's see you have i think you have an anytime attack speed yeah so we're ret return no sorry what is this Okay, so Return Thrust is a low-level parry style. has a bleed on it, chains into this attack speed debuff, 18% um, attack speed debuff. Um, 
or you can use stab which has a higher bleed and then it follows up into raise which is a little 50 damage spirit dd not nothing really to write home about i'd rather have the attack speed debuff off of return thrust and extend reach um you are any i think you could yeah you do get any time attack speed debuff in your taunt style in rage which is just a medium damage style that train uh, that um it follows up is followed up with uh, wounding thrust which is a um oh sorry this is a not an attack speed debuff but a snare so you have an anytime snare chain so that would be useful in situations like your um let's say my shaman's attacking me we're fighting and i want to let's see use my enrage and then wounding thrust and then kite them away a little bit and then I'll be able to stop and cast some heals once the interim timer is gone. So this is a strategy maybe you want to use in solo is just to get some space. Or you can do something like uh, do like a run through side snare like that. And then you'll still get room to heal, things like that. So just some options. Um, really good small or solo type stuff where you can just get some space for yourself. Other than that... Um, Let's see, Lancer. Okay, yeah, Lancer. This is, I, I did think you had an anytime attack speed debuff. So Lancer and where was it? Lunging Thrust. This is just an anytime attack speed debuff. So Lancer is a low damage anytime style followed up by a 21 second attack speed debuff. So if you can't get your parry chain off, maybe go for that. Um, really good for solo. Having hasty buffs is really strong. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. Um, we'll look at what you can get at higher levels of spear, but I, I wouldn't suggest going for them. The first thing is just a, a follow-up to your back style. It's a, a high damage style, but it's just got a bleed on it. Nothing special at 44 spear. And then at 50 spear, you have a follow-up um, follow style to your side snare. And what this is is a uh, 150 spirit damage proc but it's a cone radius, a 700 cone radius. So it's going to have roughly that sort of area of effect. If you saw that, um, show that. That should be about 700 radius, if I'm not mistaken. So your maybe your side snare will chain into this. It's going to be less damage than your, your anytime roundhouse chain. It's 150 del versus uh, 200. And plus, with it being spirit damage, people are probably going to have more spirit resist than crush resist in a lot of cases. With people getting, you know, like if you're finding a cleric, he's going to have um, a, his resist um, buff up. If you're finding a, uh, a warden, he's going to have resist buff up for his group. So you'll be hitting a lot higher spirit resist than crush on, on average, I would say. So probably definitely not worth it. 50 uh, spears, a lot to invest, especially when you have other spec lines that need points. So 41 is a really good place to stop for, for your weapon line and spear at least. So that covers pretty much all the spear. We'll look at what we get in the mending line. Um, your your basic spells are, and not when I say basic, I don't mean your baseline spells, but your your basic um, healing spells are your major heal, and that's just going to be a single target, relatively decent cast time, single target heal, heal. Sorry, we'll see how much damage it heals for. And I, I only have fifteen percent heal bonus in this template, but with fifteen percent heal bonus, it heals for uh, five fifty six. You're going to want twenty five heal bonus, but this template's messed up. It's a super old template that I've stripped down to template of the character, so I'm missing some stuff. But um, so it heals for about five fifty. I'll heal probably for about six hundred with um, proper heal bonus in your template. Um, pretty strong. The next really good ability in this um, line is it's an instant PBOE heal. It's a three fifty radius PBOE heal, and it's a four eleven delve. Super strong. Uh, it affects you and your teammates. Um, it's going to heal for about yeah 590. Like I said, and that's with it'll heal for like 650 or so with proper heal bonus, and that's up every 15 seconds. Uses a bit of power, but super strong heal. It's like a pretty much like a IP one almost every 15 seconds um, for yourself and your teammates. This makes them super strong in solo, alive, sustain, and it also makes them when they're pushing in groups and maybe getting nuked or something a little more tanky. Um, other things you get in the spec line that are interesting are you get a uh, single target instant health regen and you also get a group health regen that you have to cast. Um, the value of this is 45, the, the group uh, version, and the value of the single target is 85, so the single target is significantly better. However, I really don't like using these 
because I much prefer to use the low level heal over time. And my reasoning is heal over times work way better in combat. Also, if you're diseased, the heal over time will still work. I believe it's it's less effective if I'm not mistaken, but it will still work. Whereas if you're diseased, the health regen won't do a single thing. Your health won't move. However, you will still heal up a little bit with the hot. And also I believe if you're bleeding and things like that, that affects the health regen significantly. Whereas I don't think it affects hots. Um, it's a lower value, but it's, it just works much better. Um, so I always use a hot. Um, and you also get a group version, which is actually the same exact delve as the single target. They're both 40 heal over time every two seconds. So you get the, uh, the group one and you get the single one. So look at using those. Um, other than that, you get an instant res um, at level 35. It's 25 health, 25 mana back to the person you rezzed. Five minute reuse, 1500 range, pretty good. You also get your standard uh, res at level 10, um, just 10% life, zero mana back, casted, um, just like any other basic res. You get your disease cure, your poison cure, very standard. They're not the pulsing ones, they're the standard single target ones. And then you also get um, your single target heals. You're not gonna wanna use a single target um, base heals, but you might wanna use this uh, the baseline group heal. Um, it's only, only going to heal for about 120 or so, um, so it's pretty low value, but where you'll be using this is if the target you're healing is out of um, line of sight, and this is the only way you can get to them. Um, thinking about using it there, or um, if you're having to heal a lot of people at one time, but it's just such a low value heal, it's probably not going to be great. Um, that's going to do it for the mending line. We'll, we'll show you what you get at higher mend. It's just higher levels of the, uh, the health regens, which isn't really worth it and at level 50 you get a higher instant PBOE heal which it goes from 500 to 411 delve oops sorry where is it yeah 411 delve right here I think you're fine with the 41 mending and this is going to be a pretty big power cost it's a what is this like an 18 power cost difference so that's way over 20 percent more power cost on that so I'm happy with the level 41 one versus level 50 but that's me. I, w I wouldn't. It's sort of like going 50 spear. You have so many other lines that you need to put spec points into that you, it's hard to justify going that high. Um, but that's it for mending. So next we'll look at Odin's Will. And we'll look at Odin's Will in, uh, in this spec, the lower level Odin's Will spells. Because um, some of them do function a little bit different. Mainly the sheer spells. But first let's just talk about the, the standard like single target um, DD and then the cone DD and the pulsing stuff. So first off, you get this single target, 1500 range, 20 second reuse, uh, instant DD. And mine hits pretty weak, but if you get more Odin's Will spec, you'll hit a little bit harder. All the, the reuses and all that stay the same. So it's just a an instant DD. Great for interrupts. This is what I use it for in the spec, especially in groups. I'll just use this to interrupt a healer or a caster or something. Um, next, you get this little um, this cone DD. And it's a 25 second reuse. It's also a really good rupt. Um, it's not shaming off me. It's a, uh, a cone DD. You can see it hits from here. It's 700 range, but it cones out like that, um, 90 degrees in front of you, apparently. So use that as an interrupt. If you have higher Odin's Will, you might want to use it a little more for damage, but it's a great interrupting tool. Um, you also get this cone snare and what's interesting about the snare is it's a 60 percent snare at this level level 24 so that's pretty strong it's a pretty strong snare however it's only a 20 second duration that's affected by debt and everything like that so be careful with this and it also gives root immunity so you got to really be careful when you use this um, you don't want to use it on targets that are high priorities for snares and roots um, but if your group's not rooting out a lot of casters and things like that, and you're just in there erupting and pushing on them, you're probably not worrying about rooting casters too much. So it's probably not a bad idea to use it on casters, but try not to use it on tanks unless you absolutely have to, because your group's probably trying to melee snare or maybe root tanks. Um, so it's not going to be that great. And I'll show you. It's a uh, pretty strong snare. You can see my shaman's crawling. And if I try to land a side snare, it's just going to resist because he has immunity, obviously. Um, next, we get this pulsing cone, and this is probably the best interrupting tool because the reuse timer is so low, and it also pulses, so you can get a lot of interrupts out. Um, so what this does is you turn it on, and it erupts the same thing as the other cone, 700 radius, um, 90 degree 
cone area deal, um, but it pulses every five seconds. And what you can do, like I can, I'll cancel it after the next pulse and recast it. So I can get multiple reps really quick with it if I time it well with the with the pulse. Um, however, like any pulse, like a reverb, PBOE pulse or anything like that, you gotta be careful about breaking CC because it, you might forget it's on and, and you'll be running past a mez to root a target and it'll pulse and it'll break that mez or root if it hits. So be careful with this. A lot of times I'll just hit it and then cancel it immediately. And then it's on an eight second reuse at that point. So that's not too bad. Um, other things you get in this line are, for example, this group ablative. Um, and what this is, is just a instant um, magic absorb ablative. Uh, at this level, it's 100. I think at the highest level, it's 300, but it absorbs 100% of that damage. Um, it's a 30 second recast. It's not a, a pulsing buff or anything like it used to. I believe it used to be a pulsing buff. Um, it's a little weaker than this, but this is just a, a one time use every 30 seconds, obviously. Little magic ablative. Pretty strong. Decently strong, I should say. It's not super strong, but it is nice, especially at higher levels. If you go higher, Odin's well, it's 300 value versus 100. Um, then let's see, you get, I'm going to touch on the shears last. Uh, you get this often like this single or not single target, this group offensive proc buff. It gives you a 10, it gives your group a 10% chance to proc a, uh, a DD. Um, I don't like using this, especially at this level, just because it will break snares if you do use it. So if I try to land a side snare on like a paladin that's trying to peel me and it procs for some reason then that snare is going to be broken by the DD because the DD factors in after the styles landed. So, and that's the same thing, the same concept as um, weapons that have like DD procs on them. If they proc after, if, if they proc on a snare style, it will break the snare. Sorry, I have a cat trying to, go away cat, no one likes you. Um, so anyway, so I'm, I'm careful about using that. The damage isn't very high, so it's not really worth the hassle. Um, at higher level Odin's Will, where it does do a little bit more damage, you might want to use it, but it's all preference about how much you value your snares not getting broken randomly. Like if you're going for a super clutch snare, you don't want that proccing. Um, next, we have we have a uh, acuity shear and a dex quick shear. And at this level, you get a five minute reuse timer spell. However, it's not actually going to shear anything at this level. It's going to shear like heroism pots or... Like if for some reason you're buffed by a super low level, like you have like blue dex quick or something, it's not going to share proper yellow or red dex quick buff. Um, and that's designed that way, I think, for a purpose, just so you can't go low Odin's and, and share everything. Um, so it, it is used for, I do use it for an interrupt. It's a five minute reuse timer, so it's not great, but it's an interrupt that interrupts once a fight pretty much. Um, it's not actually going to share anything, but... At higher level Odin's, it will share QD index, and I'll, I'll get into that in a second. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for my Odin stuff. So let's go, let's open our train window and actually look at what you get at high level Odin's. So first off, we just touched on the shear. So we'll look at this. Um, it's a, at, at the highest level, you get a one minute reuse shear that actually shears. So that's really strong, and it's the same cone as the other ones. We'll cast my low level ones. So it's a 700 radius, like the 90 degree radius deal. Um, so it's pretty strong and also does a little bit of damage. Um, but you can get like, if a, if a whole group stuck up to each other, you can share the whole group with that. Really strong. Um, same with the acuity portion of it. You can share their acuity if you want over the dex quick. I think dex quick is generally better though because tanks are affected by dex quick and casters healers are affected by dex quick whereas only like damage casters and like necros are affected by acuity um your instant dd is now 145 dealt or damage with this spec um so that's pretty strong i think 47 is gonna be the so let's just go to 47 because you're not gonna go higher than that odin's will um well, let's just show what, what you can get i guess this cone is gonna be a lot harder the um the 25 second reuse cone just 100 damage. Nothing significant, really, but it will help you kind of spike things down if you need to. Um, their power cost is a little bit more expensive. It goes from uh, 32 power to mine at level 18 is 12, so it's a lot cheaper to use mine for reps, um, whereas I'm not getting any damage out of them, really, but it's a trade-off. Um, your snare is a lot better. Um, 
it's double the duration of my low level one. So it's a 40 second duration and it's also 80%. So people are crawling really with this, um, this snare. If you hit like three casters with this or something and something that doesn't have dead or soses or anything, it's gonna last the whole duration and they're gonna be not rooted, but essentially rooted. Um, like 20% movement speed is nothing. So this is really strong. You could root two or instant snare two and then get on another one and then they'll be, uh, they won't be very far when you're done killing that one. Um, and then you have your Odin's aura thing. Um, this is the offensive proc thing. It goes from, I think mine's 45 damage or 40 damage to 100 damage. So it might be useful at this point. This is really cool if you're grouped with a Savage, for example, because a Savage, if it quad hits, it can proc multiple um, multiple of these. So you can get a huge hit with a Savage if it gets really lucky with a quad quad hit. Um, other than that, you get this res, it's an instant, or sorry, it's a casted res, not an instant res, sorry. But it's a really high value res, 65% health and 35% power. Everything else is standard, four second cast time. Here's your magic ablative. Um, like I said earlier, it was 300 value. 100% um, absorb of 300 every 30 seconds. So that's really strong. Um, but yeah, so that's high Odin spec. And there are, I'll, I'll give you some Odin, high Odin specs in a bit. Um, once I, I'm going to go over the sword line, I think, here in a second. And then I'll talk about different spec options. Um, why I think my spec's good, but why I think other specs are also really good, depending on what you want to do with them. Uh, so it's all relative to how you want to play. So we'll, we'll pull up the train window again, and we'll look at sword. Let's just throw it up to 50. Uh, first off, we'll look at your anytime style. It's level 34, Polar Rift. It's a high damage style, so that's really nice. And it also has a 45 Spirit DD on it, so it's going to hit pretty hard. Um, Spear is going to do more damage over the long term with Roundhouse Chain being so strong, in my opinion. But this is this is not bad. Um, other styles you get in this line, you get a side chain that does decent damage. Um, the first style is a medium damage style. It just has a small power drain on it. Um, nothing crazy, just a standard style. And then it follows up into this, was it? Odin's Death Blow. And this is just a uh, medium damage style, but does 150 spirit damage. Um, it's, it's essentially the same thing as your spear side chain, except for it's not cone based. Um, it's okay, you know. Sword spec's gonna be pretty decent for like soloing and 1v1 and stuff like that. But in groups, I think Spear is so much better. Um, other styles you get, at 50 Sword, you get Ragnarok. Um, that's a back style with a 75 damage DD on it, high damage. So this is going to be, if you can, if you go 50 Sword, Ragnarok is going to be your highest damage style over time. I know that this is a high 150 damage DD style, but you have to rely on hitting two styles to get this. Whereas... And two Ragnaroks, you get the same DD value as this, plus you get higher growth rate styles because these are both medium damage and this is high damage with 75 damage DD. So I think over time, Ragnaroks can definitely be better. And if you mess up and miss your side style or you miss one Odin's, if you miss one style, you're losing out on a lot of damage. Whereas if you miss one Ragnarok, it kind of is less damage that you're losing in one swing, if that makes sense. So if you had a choice in your 50 sword, I think spamming Ragnaroks way better than doing your side chain. However, you do have to go 50 sword for it. Um, other styles that you have, you have a standard back snare, 15 seconds, so it's not a super long one. Um, high damage, but if you have Ragnarok, that's going to be your high damage style. This is just for peeling and snaring things. You also get an interesting style, and this is called Odin's Clip. It's a back style that has a pin effect, and I'll, 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 I'll show you what pin does in a second because I have pin on my Valkyrie. Um, but I'll explain it really quick. What pin does is an unbreakable snare, 70% snare that ignores immunity. So if the target has re immune, you can still pin them. Um, and also, like I said, it's unbreakable. So people can nuke things with it. You can hit them at, you can pin and then use like two Ragnaroks or pin and then use like a, uh, um, a roundhouse chain on them and then re pin. It's really good. But I'll, I'll show you some of that in a second, but this is a pin effect back style for sword. So that's pretty cool. Um, we looked at Polar Rift. And now let's look at just some of the more solo-oriented styles. Things like Ice Storm. That's your after block style. And it has a 20% um, attack speed debuff, which is pretty strong. And if you have 44 sword, you can use this um, bleed style. Follow it up with it. It's pretty cool. 
Um, then you have your peri chain, which is a, uh, a bleed. Um, and then that chains into this rush style that's an attack speed debuff. Um, so look at using those. You have a side snare that's nine seconds, so super low duration side snare, but you, it is a side snare, I guess, so maybe maybe use that. Um, this probably isn't worth using. This not worth using. I mean, it's detaunt, so whatever. Um, assault. This is a stun, but it procs off, or it chains off a after block style. It's a four second stun. You'll probably have shield spec with this spec, so you'll probably be using something like bash or something. So probably won't use that. Uh, this frontal style is really good because it's a 20% attack speed debuff. So maybe look at using that and then it chains into this Aurora. It's just a, loses 3% power, high damage style though. So maybe use that, I guess. Um, it's a decent in or frontal chain, but yeah, that's really good for getting a quick attack speed debuff off. And then other than that, you're looking at just nothing really down here. Um, so yeah, so that's sword line. Um, and now let's look at shield, because I, I am shield here. And Valkyries get an interesting shield line. Um, we'll look into that in a, in a little bit, but I'm going to just talk about what we have with this spec. Uh, first and foremost, you get slam. It's an anytime five second stun. Slam is super good for peeling on like on non-heavy tanks, in my opinion. Things that get the five second slam. Because things like warriors, armsmen, and uh, heroes, they get a nine second slam, whereas everything else gets five. Um, but five second slam is really good because you get such a lower immunity timer the, your opponent gets a lower immunity timer they only get a 25 second stun immunity timer versus a 45 second immunity timer off of the nine second slam and how that works is it's two seconds times the duration of the stun so it's two times sorry four seconds times the duration no my mistake five seconds times the duration of the stun sorry so it's five times five and it's gonna be 25 second immunity whereas five times nine is 45 seconds so you can get more slams off in a fight and if all you're doing is hitting with a slam and then a side snare and then running off, that's great. And then you can come back in 25 seconds and do the same. Um, the slams do have more value when you're trying to kill something, um, using it more offensively. But um, other than that, you get Mangle, which is an eight second stun. So if you need a long duration stun, there it is. It's a side sale though, so whatever. Um, you get an after block stun, seven seconds. Um, pretty good for soloing and things like that. Um, you get a, a back stun that's six seconds, but if you're going spear, you have a seven second back stun and it's only a second difference. So I always just use slam. I need to put pin on the bar generally. Um, and then where we get interesting here is pin. And I mentioned pin earlier, but I'm going to show it off a little bit. Uh, like I said, it's the unbreakable snare that ignores immunity, goes through immunity and doesn't provide immunity. So we'll put the shaman on auto run and we'll hit, let's see if we can land it. We'll hit him with a pin. And then we'll hit him with a uh, a couple styles here, and then we'll repin him. Oops. So as you can see, I'm hitting him. Um, and while I'm hitting him, he's staying snared, and then I can just repin. So it's something you want to essentially use once, hit one or, or two or three swings, and then repin them. If you're using it offensively, if you're trying to like chase down a caster, that's what I do. I run around and hit pin two styles and then I'll pull my shield back out and hit pin again and then rinse repeat um, and I'll, I'll even show you we'll, we'll snare him we'll break the snare so as you can see here he's gonna be like melee snare immune but I can still pin him so that's why that ability is so strong and you can use it to damage people too or use it while people are getting damaged um, you can use it to peel it's an anytime like mini snare. Um, if they're slamming you and you can't get it like a side snare, you can just run up to the target and hit him with a pin. It's low. It's a low um, duration snare. It's only six seconds. You can increase it to eight seconds if you wear the whole entire Valk curse set. So that's something you might want to look into if you want a higher value pin. Um, but at, at base, it's only six seconds. And I'll talk more about the curse stuff later. But um. So use it as peels, use it offensively to set up for your team or for yourself. Super strong. If you're soloing and you got a, a dude beating on you and you're trying to get some space, hit him with a pin, kite out a little bit, and then you can turn around and cast some heals or something. And then do it again. You're fighting some more, whatever. You need to kite away again. 
then hit them with a pin and then kite it up. You can just do that all the time. And I mean, yeah, they can like seal disease and stuff to you, but you can wrap that pretty easy with your instance. So that's a really good way to uh, be annoying on a like 1v1 bout can constantly get space to heal yourself with your major heal and whatnot. Um, that does it for the shield styles I have. But Valkyries get special shield styles. Um, I don't think a lot of people use them. Um, they're okay. They're, you just have to spec a lot of shield to get the good ones. Um, this isn't really worth noting. Let's see, what does Maneuver do? Is this, okay, so this is an anytime shield style that gives you a high defensive bonus and then it follows up into this side swipe deal. It's low dam or medium damage, not really worth talking about. Uh, Brace is interesting though because it chains off a pin and it gives you a 300 ablative. It's a 50% absorb ablative, but it's up to 300. So you're essentially giving yourself 300 extra hits for melee. So this is interesting in a like 1v1 situation, right? Like a sword valk or something like that. If you can go 47 shield, that's all you need to get it. And you can chain pin, like, you know, maybe use your pin chain, use pin and then brace, and then use a couple um, normal sword styles until this fades, until they do enough damage to you to go through this ablative, and then re-hit a pin and a brace again. That's pretty cool, I think. Um, it's a super defensive style, gives you a lot of extra health, effective health and things like that. So maybe look at doing that if you want to go at interesting spec and go 47 shield at some point. And then you get mangle, which is, or sorry, brutalize, which is a 10 second after stun or after block stun. So it's a lot of points to put into it though. So that's what Valkyries get in shield. Um, like I said, I'm 42 shield, 24 Odin's will, 41 spear, 42 men. That's what I get. Now let's look at some other specs. Um, we'll go to my third monitor with my, yeah, there we go. Let's see. So this is a uh, an interesting sword spec. Actually, let's just do away with this. We'll look at the spear spec first, the high Odin spear spec. I'd rather do that. Um, so the high Odin spec is generally 47 Odins. Let's drop this. 47 Odins, 41 spear, and like 42 rejuve, and then whatever parry you have left over. And this is a good 1v1 spear spec in my opinion. It's also a good group spec also if you don't think you want slam, because what you get in here is that one minute reuse timer dex quick shear. Um, yeah, so one minute reuse timer dex quick shear actually shears the buff um, and it gives you another rupt on the minute reuse timer. So that's pretty cool. Um, you also get higher damage out of your um, your Odin's line and you get that decent castable res. Um, other than that, you get the same mending, the same spear stuff, but it's just it's, it's a pretty popular spec for uh for high odins um if you wanted to go like a sword line you could go something like 47 sh sword let's see drop your parry a little bit 42 shield and yeah so you would go maybe 47 sword 42 mending 42 shield and a little bit of parry nine parry oh sorry drop that parry down drop this down yeah yeah you can't go for you i'm sorry my mistake. This is what you would go, I think. You would go 47 sword, 42 shield, 12 Odin's will, and that gets you the uh, the instant snare, the instant DD, the cone pulse, and then the regular cone, I believe. Doesn't get you any shears or anything like that, but gets you three, or four instant interrupts um, that don't do a lot of damage, but they just erupt. And then decent healing. You don't get the, the red major heal, but you do get the yellow one, but you do get the level 41 instant heal, so that's strong. Uh, what you could also do is drop your shield down a little bit to 35 and just run mangle. You lose pen and everything like that. And then let's see if you can try. Yeah, you can go 50 sword if you want a little more damage. Can you get the major? Yeah, you get the major there. So you go something like this. I think you might even get pinned with the spec, but I'm not sure. But this gives you Ragnarok if you really want Ragnarok. You'd use your Mangle and your Bash as your stuns, your seven second after block stun and your side, eight second side stun. Um, if you wanted to, you might could go something like, yeah, you're not gonna be able to get pinned in the spec unless you, yeah, no pin there. Um, if you really wanted to try to get that um, pin chain that I talked about earlier, you could go something like this. 47 sword and that gets you the side chain um the 150 delve spirit dd 
And then you get the uh, level 47 brace style, which has that melee ablative, 300 melee ablative. So that's pretty strong. But you have to give up some of your healing. You only get the 31 instant heal and then the, the 33 major heal. So your heal goes from 411 delve to 314. So that's a pretty big jump down, but you do get a lot more shield spec. Um, so options there. It's uh, There's a lot of ways you can spec a, a solo Valk, especially like a sword shield Valk. So those are just some options. Um, play around with them. Uh, yeah, those are just some, some things that I, I might look at doing. Um, other than that, we'll look at things like... Um, let's look at your MLs. Most Valks are going to go Warlord. I think the other spec is Stormlord, but that's don't don't even worry about that. Uh, Warlord gets you uh, Warguard, which is a 25 melee absorb buff for your group. Just really strong. Makes you take a lot less damage to melee. So 10 minute reuse, 40 second duration, pretty strong. Um, you also get um, Leadership, which increases your effective level, essentially. Uh, five minute reuse. Shares a reuse time with Warguard. I like Warguard a lot better. Um, it's good in PvE and stuff like that. And it can be it can make you do a little bit better in RVR too, but I don't use it in RVR. Uh, Defending Mars is interesting. What this does is it sacrifices 50% of your life um, for a 1,000 heal for your realm all around you. And I'll show you how much it heals for and kind of what it does in a second. Let's get my guy pretty low. Let's throw this on the bar. So Shaman's at 32% right now. I'm at 100. We'll use Defending Martyr. And I heal the Shaman for a 1,000... Let's pull this up. 1,070, essentially. You see right there. And it takes away 50% of my life. Uh, 10 minute reuse timer. 2,000 radius heals everyone in the area. I like to use this a lot um, if I'm not getting damaged. But my say my I'm, I'm with a Zerker and we're pushed in pretty hard, or he's pushed in pretty hard, taking a lot of damage. I'll use that, and then I'll quickly use my little heal on myself if I'm not close to him. So I'll heal up the damage, I, a lot of the damage I gave away to him, and I'll keep him alive. Um, so it's a, it's a great way to, to help your teammates if you're not the one getting damaged. Um, other RAs, where's my thingy? There it is. Um, oh, sorry, other MLs. Uh, cleansing Aura just reduces the effect of dots on you. Energizing Aura um, reduces the end cost for you and your teammates, so that's pretty cool. Considering Valks do do a lot, or you do use a lot of endurance. Uh, guided Strike makes your, um, I think your next attack gets a, yeah, your next attack gets a critical hit chance by 10%. It's okay. Um, this increases the chance of um, people might miss you. Uh, it increases the chance, it increases the enemy's chance of missing your Vialis. Uh, this is really strong. Cowering um, Bellow. Yeah, Bellow, yeah. Uh, it's a pet scare. So you run past a bunch of earth pets and you hit your pet scare and it makes them all run away. Um, or if you have a, like, even like cat pets, minstrel pets, big pets too, just pop that. They'll make them flee. Five minute reuse, 350 radius. Really good. Um, bolstering battle core is just a 10% health power and endurance heal for your, um, realm 1500 radius. So just do a little damage to my shaman here. You can see he's at 58%. I'll use this. I'll pop it to 69%. Pretty cool. Uh, that's going to do it for warlord. You also get siege masters and reduces the siege timers, um, to fire like rams and things like that and trebuchets and things of the sort. Um, seal abilities, I like to go the disease line. Um, other than that, you can get like seal resist, things like that. Um, doesn't really matter, but I, I do like having the seal disease and maybe like a, my seals are in fact weird. I probably have an, uh, like a 1500 range DD also that I would use because uh, seal disease is only 1000 range now. So things to think about. Uh, your rank five, it gives you a 75% chance not to, um, whoops, that's not it. 75% chance not to use power or endurance on spells and combat styles. Uh, 10 minute reuse time or 45 second durations for your group, thousand radius. Uh, it's pretty good. It's not the best rank five, but if you're having power issues, your group's having power endurance issues, pop that and you're using a lot less power and endurance. 75% arcane siphon essentially. Uh, which gives you a chance not to use power on a spell. So keep that in mind. Um, we'll look at some RA things. I think you, uh, I'll, I'll look at group RAs first and then I'll look at some solo RAs. Um, my RAs are really weird right now because it's for, I think I use, I can't remember what PV encounter I was doing, but I'm spec for PV. It's probably like Jack Frost or something. Anyway, we'll look at group RAs first. Um, 
Valkyries do get charge, and that's one of their one of their defining realm abilities. So I definitely get some charge. I'm rank 11, so I always get charge five, because uh, I like to be able to charge multiple times a fight if I need to. However, one second. moment guys um, I like to be able to charge multiple times a fight um, if you're lower rank you can only get away with charge three that's fine charge three is a five minute reuse timer um, charge five is a one minute and a half reuse timer um, if you're only fighting once every five minutes and you want one charge a fight charge three is great um, charge four is kind of weird because unless you're fighting every three minutes and you can use one charge a fight there you're probably fights probably aren't a lot of fights probably aren't lasting over three minutes some of the better fights might like really even fights might last up to three minutes but you're probably not getting multiple charges of fight here so I probably I don't know if I would go charge for in a group setting in solo setting I probably would because solo fights can happen a lot more frequently you can get in and out of solo fights quickly and with Valkyrie if you're fighting like a like a paladin or something those fights are gonna last forever probably so you might get multiple charges there but I like probably charge through charge five in group um, you'll want things like I like Iker the deep if you have a coordinated group what Iker does is it's a 10 second Iker one is a 10 second route uh, bolt range 15, or eight, 1875 range uh, 500 radius so it's pretty big does a little bit of damage too uh, the good thing about Iker is it resets the targets root immunity so if a shaman just roots someone and it purges you or the shaman can icker that target and then they can reroute the the shaman can reroute that target so it's super strong if you're coordinated and you can call out ickers and rooting muse and things like that if you're playing in like a group that's not very coordinated or that doesn't rely a lot on roots then i probably wouldn't bother with it also interesting fact you can root or sorry you can icker through phase shift and it'll actually apply the damage and the the root effect so that's pretty strong so if someone's a if you take a minstrel down to like one or zero HP and it phase shifts, you can use Icker to kill it. So that's pretty pretty cheeky, I guess. Um, other than that, purge, you're going to want some purge because you don't have stoicism on the Valk. You'll definitely get some debt in a group situation. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But purge is nice for those like single target long mezzes. They'll still last like 20 something seconds. Or those brutes or cast and melee stuns. Like if you get stunned in a bad spot and you need to purge, I like having Purge 3, at least Purge 2, but a higher rank, I like Purge 3, 10 minute reuse. Um, but the amount of Purge you get just depends on how much reuse you want. Uh, but I wouldn't go past Purge 3 in a group because you'll be getting debt and things like that too. Other than that, that about does it for actives, for group play at least. Um, you'll also definitely want debt 9 pretty much as soon as possible. I would go like charge, if, if I was a low, a low rank Valk just coming up, I would and, and for group play, I would get charge three as soon as possible, and then I would put every point into debt until I get debt nine from there on, and then I would get some purge and things like that. Um, I just think that's super important, and then you can start playing around with more charge or purge and things like that. But get that nine pretty quickly. I, I, I do like having charge though um, early on as well. It's just kind of a matter of you can go debt first or charge. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, other than that, I like getting AOM. I have AOM nine right now because I'm like jack for aspect but i would go at most like aom six or seven uh, but aom five is a good number it gives you 10 percent aom five gives you 10 percent secondary resist aom seven i think gives you 15 percent secondary resist um really strong if you're finding a lot of caster groups um, a lot of times it valks the target because their health pool is a little bit lower than things like zerkers and uh, warriors and things like that and they don't have a high natural resist like warriors um, so a lot of the times Val or valkyries are targeted and so having some more magic um, resist helps. Um, other than that, get long in one, and then you probably won't have a ton of more points to, to play around with. But if you want more damage, you can go things like Mastery of Majory. That's going to affect your proc damage, like on your roundhouse. Or you can go things like Mastery of Pain. That's going to affect your crit chance, your melee crit chance. Um, it's just preference there. Um, that's going to pretty much do it for for group RA specs, I mean, I'll, I'll show you my, my rank 11 spec, I think is pretty much charge five, purge three, debt nine, AOM six, and long one one, maybe Icar one also, and I think that's it. So you 
don't have a lot of room to play. Valkyries require a ton of range to pl like be played at the best at, at potential, I should say. Um, we'll look at some other RA specs real quick for ma mainly solo. We'll pull up this character planner thing again. And let's just give us a little bit of range. Let's see. Let's just go to like seven, seven all low. And it gave me eight all low for some reason. There we go. Okay. So let's look at maybe a solo Valk. Always get long win one, just because in cost is nice. It's one point, no big deal. Um, I'd get solo, probably charge five at this rank, maybe purge three. Uh, probably wouldn't mess around with Icker. Maybe Icker one if you really want to, if you find yourself wanting it. Um, but it might be a waste of points, who knows? It's up to you. Um, if you're Spear, I'd get like parry five, maybe parry six, because I think that's pretty strong. Um, I'd get some wild healing because that gives you your crit, um, your, your oh, sorry, your heal abilities a chance to crit because heals don't have a base chance to crit. You have to spec into it to give them any sort of chance to crit. So I always get a little bit of wild healing just to give me that chance to get a massive spike heal every now and then. Um, if you're sword shield, maybe throw in some mastery of blocking too. Like if you're sword and sword spec with shield. Um, other than that, you can go things like maybe you want a higher purge or higher charge. I, I probably would. Um, but you don't have to, you can, you can even go higher parry if you want. I don't know if that's worth it. Or if you want damage, um, sword styles and your roundhouse chain are both going to be affected by mastery majory. Your polar rift and your side chain and sword will, um, and like I said, roundhouse is going to be affected by mastery majory and just the proc, not the actual swing portion. And also if your high Odin's will, the stuff will be affected by, or your Odin's spells will be affected by majory as well. Um, so that's interesting. If you find yourself going a lot of mastery of pain, like say you want to go like, I want a lot of melee crit. So I'm going to go pain five. Um, I wouldn't go pain six next. And the reason why is from pain five to pain six, you get a 5% crit boost and it costs five points. If you see up here, I have eight left now, I have three left. All I get is 5% crit for those five realm skull points. What I would do instead is go down here and get dual threat one. And that gives you 5% chance to crit on melee and magical and it costs five points. So it just makes sense to go this. Um, it'll help your um, your Odin styles crit, but also it's going to give you the same exact thing as for the same exact cost for your melee crit. But why not get free magic crit built into? It's just a free, a little bit of free uh, extra um, utility out of that. So I, I I never go higher than pain, unless I'm going like a, a lot of mastery pain. But I always get dual threat one at some point on classes that can if I'm going higher than pain nine or pain five, sorry. Um, but like I said, for solo, if I'm spear, I'll go high master parry. If I'm sword and shield, I'll go, I'll split them pretty much. And then you can build some damage and build higher charge and stuff like that. You can also get IP. I probably wouldn't go higher than IP one really, because you do have that massive spike kill every 15 seconds. And also with heal bonus, IP one is going to heal for a decent amount. Um, and then with IP1 and your normal heal, you'll heal for probably like 1,200, maybe 1,000, something like that. So that's a lot of HP. I don't, I don't think it's worth investing more into IP2. But if you do, if you want it, if you find yourself needing it, go for it. But I probably wouldn't. Um, and that's going to do it pretty much for RAs. It's a lot It's a lot of, a lot of it's up to you. Um, but defensive RAs like parry and blocking are really strong solo. So I always get those. Um, let's see. What else we got? And how about do it for um, all your RAs and skills and MLs and stuff like that? Um, we'll talk a little bit about template stuff. Um, for group templates, you're going to want to get something like Astral Cloak of Heroes or the Valkyrie Loyal Cloak. And both of these have a magic resist charge. Uh, this one's going to give you a 20 second duration, um, 30 magic resist, secondary magic resist. Uh, the Loyal Cloak is going to be a 15 second duration, 40% magic resist charge. Slightly lower duration, but more value. I'd probably go with the Loyal Cloak, if I'm being honest. I don't know what the other charge on the Loyal Cloak is. So maybe maybe look at that. Um, it's probably something heal-oriented, but I'm not entirely sure. Or it might be something like Blade Turn Pierce. If it is Blade Turn Pierce, it's super strong. I can't remember if Valkyries get that or someone else, but I think it might be Blade Turn Pierce for your group. So... If that's the case, definitely put the loyal click in the template, one hundred percent. But I can't remember off the top of my head, so don't don't hate me for that. Let me see if I have it in my inventory. I die, do. 
No, okay. Um, other things in group, you want to get things like, like a dragon, something with a 10% magic resist charge. Um, you can get them off of your slime coated ring, which is the, the ring version of this, dragon tooth bracer. The curative belt of the vigilante, I think, has the magic charge or a magic charge and also helps with your Valk template. You get heal bonus off that. Um, you're going to want heal bonus, in my opinion, in a Valk template group or solo small man. Um, just because it affects, you'll be healing your teammates, you'll be using this instant heal on yourself when you're taking damage, it's easy to get. Um, put some heal bonus and casting stats on your sword and shield. I use things like Pixlayer Hammer because it has spell range and heal bonus and cast speed. And then this um, Pixlayer Small Shield has melee speed and a really good proc. It has a uh, 200 damage. Um, I think it's melee and, yeah, I think it's melee and magic. So I like using the shield, but it also has cast speed a lot of decks and stuff like that so it's a good shield to use for hybrids um but yeah so i, I like to put put as many heal and cast speed stats on your sword and shield and just swap to sword and shield when you're healing oops and then when you're meleeing stuff swap back to spear and then when you're healing stuff swap back to your sword and shield um if you're going high odin's wheel or sorry odin's will I keep saying wheel odin's will you're definitely going to want infernal sleeves i don't have them in this template i think this template's messed up like i said earlier um but high Odin's will, high men specs, you will be using a ton of power solo or in a group. So I would definitely get something like, um, something with some power regen built in. Um, Infernal Seas have it. The Curse of Valkyrie um, chest piece has five, I think. Um, Otherworldly Piercing Gem has some. Um, just throw one of those in there, get some extra power regen. It'll help you a lot, especially like solo with high men, high Odin's and groups also. Um, I mentioned earlier the curse set. If you wear all three curse pieces, I think it's the chest piece, the arms, and then the uh, boots. If you wear all three of those pieces, you get um, two extra seconds added to your pin. So it goes from six second pin to eight second pin. So if you find that to be useful, go for it. Um, I like those otherworldly, uh, sorry, not otherworldly, the curse blood gauntlets. It has a 25% instant heal. Um, you'll be healing yourself for probably like 800, 850. Um, every 15 minutes, but really good. Just helps give you another little burst of healing. Um, I'd use those in a group and solo if if it was me. Um, you can also use the other world, the, I can't, or sorry, the cursed gloves with the heal bonus on them. And that gives you a, I think it's a 10 minute or seven minute proc, um, not proc, but use um, ability that buffs your heal bonus by 10 or 15. And they just changed it recently, but it's a pretty decent heal bonus for yourself for I think seven to 10 minutes. I can't remember, they just changed it, like I said. So maybe look at that, but I like the blood gauntlets if you can fit them in. Um, other than that, your weapon choices. This is for solo or group. Um, I like relatively fast ones. Uh, the ones I use a lot are these 4.3 speed weapons, and spear at least, because if you get a lot of roundhouse chains off, you get a lot of damage out. And if you're using slow uh, weapons, like the ML10 weapon or Pixlayer weapons, which are like 5.7, 6.0, 5.8, whatever, um, you're getting less roundhouses off, but you're doing higher melee damage, but your proc damage overall is lower. So I like these faster weapons. Um, this weapon also has a, we a weapon skill buff on it. This is the Darkness Falls champion level 15 weapon. Um, and your roundhouse procs and your sword procs are based on your weapon skill. So a 10% buff to your weapon skill is going to essentially be a 10% buff to those procs. So really strong for buffing your damage there. Um, so I like using these. Um, if you want to, you can swap in a slow weapon to spike something down. Like sometimes I'll, I'll do something like this. I'll, I'll hit someone with a, a windmill and I'll swap to my pixel weapon and then hit with a roundhouse. Uh, of course it resisted there, but I'm going to get a lot higher melee damage out of the roundhouse. Add the melee portion of the roundhouse and I'll get the same from the proc, but it'll just happen all at once. And, but then my next swing will be really slow, but the swing between from when I'm using my fast weapon and I swapped my slow weapon, the, the difference between those two swings are going to be based on the fast weapon swing speed. But I'll still get the damage out of the uh, slow weapon. Whoops. Let me redo that. So that's just something I like to do sometimes, especially if someone's at like 40% health, 30% health, and I think I can finish them off with a roundhouse with a slow weapon, I'll, I'll swap to it then. Um, that's definitely not necessary or anything. It's just something I like to do to maximize my damage sometimes. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. Um, solo um, items, you can put in the otherworldly cloak um, that gives you the 
the seven minute use defensive proc. I think it's like a 20 or 15% chance to proc a 150 ablative. It's like a toned down version of SOM. So that's pretty strong. I uh, use things like, um, like dragon scale bracers or whatever has a, a, me a 10% melee charge on that. Those are strong. Um, ghostly, um, necklace of the whatever valor, I think is what it's called. The necklace of valor that has the 7% heal over time for 30 seconds. That's pretty strong. Um, yeah, that's going to be about it. You want to use a, probably a breastplate with, um, heal over time proc on it. The curse chess piece has a heal over time proc and the RA light bought chess piece has a heal over time proc. So maybe look at using those, uh, for solo. Other than that, I think that's about it for Valks. Um, just release templating, um, some strategies <clears throat> in groups. You can, um, your pr primary role in like a hybrid style group is going to be to be a, a frontline tank that interrupts a lot. You're probably not going for a lot of kills. You might get the odd kill, put out some damage on a Valk, but you're going to want to be erupting a lot. I think your primary job is to get in there, interrupt the casters and healers and stay alive. And like, say if you have like a two tank, three caster setup, your casters are probably doing more of the damage. So you'll, you'll, you'll run in a little bit and you'll throw out some, some little NCDs, maybe some diseases and then, you know, run up. Maybe you can like cone two or three casters and you know, turn on your little pulsing, rub some stuff, then get in there, do a little bit of damage if you can. If you start getting new, it's run away, hit your insta heal on yourself. Um, that's what I would do in a tank group. If you're in a tank group, you're probably doing a lot of damage. Um, cause your whole group's pushing your, you can be a little less, uh, you're a little less fragile, I should say, cause you have a lot more support around you. Um, then you just stick stuff down. Um, let's just have this guy run away, hit this guy with a pin and then a couple of, uh, roundhouse chains Hit him with another pin or miss it, miss it twice. Miss it three times, wow. And then hit him with another roundhouse chain and then just kill him. So, solo, um, if you are if you have shield spec, do things like that pin strategy I was talking about earlier. Um, have the guy hitting you, hit him with the pin, run away, wait till you can cast. He starts disease, you hit him with erupts and then heal yourself. I'm healing him because he needs health, but um, also do things like, uh, I don't know, hit, hit him with a side snare like that, run away, hit him with some heals, or turn too early, hit him with some heals, use your anytime snare chain, whatever. Um, getting space on Valkyrie is super strong because you can heal. So anytime you can like kind of reset a fight quickly, just to throw off like three major heals on yourself, you're back at full health. And then they're probably not, <clears throat> unless they're like a paladin that can do the same thing. Uh, you can also use charge, charge away from a fight and heal. Uh, there's pretty much nothing they can do about that. Uh, so that's strong. If you have charge five, you can charge away every minute and a half, heal yourself, come back in. Or if you have, you know, whatever charge you have, super strong. So look at resetting the fights a lot. People might not like it that you're fighting, but it's a strat, who cares? Um, you can use your instant snare. So I snared my shaman. I'm running away and turn around and like cast disease or heals or whatever. Um, so you can use your snare in that way as well. Um, and then you can still, if you want to, pen them because you can do that whenever you want. Do the same thing. Um, if you're sword and shield, sit behind your shield a lot. Just absorb a lot of hits. Keep your health going. Whittle them down. When you get a stun, use your side chain or back stun or back style Ragnarok if you have it. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty much it. Um, it's kind of hard to talk about too many strategies just when I'm playing with a bot. <clears throat> but as you get out there and play your Valk, you'll, you'll find some cool things, um, cool ways to use abilities. Uh, things like Numb. Talk about that if you don't know the numb trick that people probably don't fall for as much anymore, but maybe this will teach you not to fall for it. So what numb is, it's two second stun, looks like that. It looks very similar to mangle. If you saw that was the mangle animation. Different uh, different style. So mangle is a red style um, track, I guess. Uh, numb is gonna be a, a, a greenish blue one. But what mangle is, or sorry, what numb is a two second stun so the reason to use this is because you want to hit someone with a numb and hopefully blue purge thinking it was a slam or a mangle. 
and then then, then they're going to have a, a, a 10 second um, immunity timer so you can restun really quickly um, like I said earlier it's stun duration times five so it'll be two times five 10 second um, immunity uh, what you can also do if you want is do that numb and then you can get a side uh, snare off um, that way you can get even more peels off um, it's a little more risky especially if the opposing person has a shield that can slam you right like if you mess up the numb and miss miss like the the side snare then they just face you and slam you and if you had them slam for five seconds you can land two styles and you definitely get that side snare off so that's just a little tip to use if you want to just playing with lower immunity timers um, yeah, that's, that's about it. There, there's probably some more stuff. It's hard to cover everything. Anyway, if you have any questions about Valkyries or any, uh, comments, anything you want to know, um, any suggestions for me, anything that I might have missed out that's super important. Uh, that's happened a lot in a lot of videos. I'll, I'll miss out on a, a really key point and then someone will tell me in the comments and we can have a discussion there where I'll sometimes remake a video if it's, if I missed out on something super important. But if you have anything that I miss that needs to be covered or that you just maybe a tip for me. That I might not know. Um, that'd be great. Uh, let me know in the comments. Um, if you have any questions, uh, requests, suggestions, any of that, let me know. Uh, thank you again. This was the uh, the Valkyrie class on Midgard. Thanks for watching, guys, and hope you uh, enjoyed and might have learned something. Thanks, guys.